Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, what time is it? Goodness, isn't it pouring rain? It's exactly three minutes after 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, and it certainly is pouring rain. We've made the New York train. I never thought we would. No, we made it with seven minutes to spare. Now we can sit in our car and relax. David, are you sure we ought to live in New York all week? I mean, isn't it awfully expensive? I mean, even though we are living at Julian Hartley's. <laughs> Listen, you country mouse. It won't cost us a penny more than here. Unless, unless you start buying bargains. I promise I'm not going to spend one penny. Good. I'm not even going to look in a shop window. Good. No matter how many bargains. Good. I'll believe it when I see it. Look at that rain. You don't believe me? About bargains? No. Hear the rain? You know, I thought it was April showers and May flowers, not the other way around. Mm, this is no shower. It's a junior grade flood. <laughs> Two more days up here and I'd start building an ark. It's been raining ever since Saturday. Oh, it slowed down for ten minutes yesterday. Yes. Remember? Ten whole minutes. That only made it seem worse. <laughs> David, why does the country seem so much worse in the rain than the city does? Oh, you can see it so much better. I think... By Friday, the rain will have stopped. Well, it better have. With the sun will come Gertrude. I wonder what kind of a maid she'll be. Well, Gertrude being the plumber's sister-in-law, I, I wouldn't know. David, you don't think we're quitters, do you? Going off to New York and leaving a house full of mess and carpenters? Well, a little. But we'll be back Friday. I know. Only when we closed the door, the house looked like it was staring at me with tears rolling down the window. And Bluff and Shakespeare, it's awful to leave your cat and dog with strangers. No, Jared Tucker isn't a stranger. He sold us the house. Mm. Besides, you left him enough instructions to fill a five-foot bookshelf. <laughs> no, really, shouldn't we have taken them along, darling? Julia and Hartley's beautiful house would be delighted to have a, a Great Dane and a Persian cat running around in it. Say, my watch is slow. It is? Yeah. I better get a move on. Park the car and buy a new commutation ticket. What happened to the old one? Nothing, except that it expired. Oh, they do that at the end of the month, don't they? Yes, yes, regularly. But David, listen, I don't think you'll have time to do both. Both of what? Buy the ticket and park the car. Oh, oh this, um, this couldn't be a plot, could it? A plot? What do you mean? I mean, it couldn't be uh, you want a last chance to get your hands on the wheel before you get orders from Dr. Rowland to stay out of the driver's seat. Oh, now, come on. The parking place is only just across the street. But it's pouring. I have an umbrella. Besides, it's worse for me standing in lines to buy tickets. Anyway, it looks like the shower's over. Mm, it does, doesn't it? All right, Barney Oldfield. <laughs> Take her away. Sometimes you're so sweet. I almost love you. Never mind that. Now, meet me on the platform in exactly three minutes and a quarter. Hey, you forgot something. What? I... Let's see, I got our suitcases. You didn't kiss me goodbye. Oh, for three minutes and a quarter, it doesn't pay. Oh, don't be such a gentleman. <laughs> All right. Consider yourself kissed. Now, I don't want to miss our train. I've, I've got a client coming at ten. Ah, oh, consider it. <laughs> Stop right there a second. Say, uh, where are you going with that car? I'm going to park it in your lot. Isn't that right? Good enough. That's fine. Here's a ticket. That'll be 35 cents. Let's see. 25, 35. Here you are. Yeah. And here's your ticket. Thank you. Say, uh, tell me, lady, how long are you planning on being here? Me? Yes, ma'am. You? Oh, about three minutes. I'm catching a train to New York. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry, lady. Let me make myself clear. 
What train are you coming back out on? Oh, we won't be back until Friday. Until Friday? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you say so before? Well, I did, as soon as I knew what you wanted to know. Mm. You can't put that car there if you're going to leave it here. I can't. Why, lady, you'll be blocking traffic if you leave it there for a week. Well, where should I put it then? There'll be all kinds of people who won't be able to get out with the car. Mm, I see what you mean. Well, just tell me where to put it, and I'll be glad to put it there. And if people can't get out with their cars, you know what's going to happen at home? The lamb chops will get burned. Lamb chops? Tell me where to put the car, and they won't get burned. And when the lamb chops get burned, everybody's going to get sore. They're going to be sore at me, and they're going to be sore at the little lady who parked her car in the wrong spot. Now, listen, look here. I've got to catch a train. Lady, and... take it easy. Take it easy. I've been watching people around here catching trains for 20 years. You'll catch a train, all right. I promise My you. My husband is waiting for me at the station. Can't you park the car for me? Why, lady, I'd be very glad to do That's that for fine. you. That's fine. It's really very nice of you to do this. And I know my husband will appreciate it. Ah, lady, lady, look, you got me wrong. Now what? I said I'd be glad to park your car for you, only I can't. Oh, please, I've only got about three minutes to catch my train. Lady, didn't I tell you not to worry? I'd be very happy in the extreme to park your car, only... Only what? Only? It is not allowed, not permitted. You see, we're not bonded, and we... I'm not allowed to touch people's cars. Now I've got about two minutes to catch my train. Now either lady, you park... Lady, I am here to offer you a bargain. This is one time in my life when I'm not interested in bargains. Ah, oh, but you have not heard this one yet. Lady, I am here to offer you a special weekly rate. I'm not interested in special weekly rates. I'm only interested in catching my train. Please. Say, how much is that special weekly rate? Now, first, here is your 35 cents back. Would you give me back my ticket? Why? Seven times 35 is how much? Please, I'm awfully slow at multiplication. Where can I leave this car? I told you not to worry, lady. You will not miss the train. Oh, look at all the people in back of me. I'm stopping traffic. Seven times 35 is $2.45. Now, remember that. Two dollars... And 45 cents. What of it? What of it, she asks. Now, I am going to make you a special rate of two dollars. Flat. Two dollars. How do you care for that? Please, where can I park my car and I'll go away and never bother you again, I promise. A saving to you, madam, a saving, a net saving of 45 cents. Do you realize in these inflationary times what it means? A saving? of 45 cents. I'm not interested in inflation or in anything except parking my car. And, and, and my husband is waiting. Okay, lady, okay. Let it never be said that Lewis used unfair means on anyone. Let it never be said. You can park your car over, uh, over there, yes. Here, I'll just jump up on the running board and direct oh, you. Oh, thank you. Now, right over there, lady. Ah, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's uh, right in there. Uh Uh-huh, perfect. Very, very neatly done for a lady. For anybody. Uh Uh-huh. Now, that's it. Now, just slide it in there as nice and easy as a sardine. Nifty, lady, positively nifty. I thank you. How much did you say I saved? Why, 45 cents. And, madam, that is not the half of it. Oh? For the weeklies, as I call them, I wash your car once over lightly the day before you take it away. You do? How lightly? Well, uh, usually I charge at least, if you'll pardon the expression, another six bits for a job like that. I don't know why I'm listening to all this, because I have to catch a train... Seventy-five cents and forty-five cents. How much is that? Uh, dollar and ten cents. Uh, I should say a dollar and twenty cents. Dollar and twenty cents. By practically buying your ticket all the way to dear little old New York. You mean I can go all the way to New York for nothing? 
I can't resist. Here you are. One dollar, two dollars. Thank you, madam. Thank you, and you'd better hurry. Your train is just coming in now. Oh! Now look what you made me do. Now I've got to rush. Hey, lady, lady, watch where you're going. Those cars mean business, you know. Claudia. Claudia. What on earth happened to you? I thought you decided to walk to New York. But I made it, didn't I? Just about. I think that after getting here practically half an hour early, I almost missed it. This is no time for philosophy. Now, here. Here you go up. Up on the top. I'm up. Huh. Thank goodness we did make it. Oh. Now, we're off. David. What? Darling, I did it again. You did what again? Well, I... Another bargain. In three minutes and a quarter. I don't know what comes over me when I hear that word. Ooh, just a mild sort of voodoo. It's just like being hypnotized. <laughs> when somebody says bargain, you could stick half pins right through me. I'd never feel it. Well, was it a, um, a good one this time? Wonderful. I saved a dollar and 20 cents. That's fortunate. Here, we can sit right here. Oh, wonderful. How? Well, I paid a whole week's parking crossing the station. Say that again. I paid for a week. It saved a dollar and twenty cents. That's, um, that's what I thought you said. The only trouble is, David, we have to stay a week, or it isn't a bargain. Oh. Well, let me let you in on a little information. It isn't a bargain anyway. Well, I'll add it up for you. Don't bother. I added it up last week. He offered me the same Yankee bargain. Say that again. In days gone by, that Connecticut character would have been peddling wooden nutmegs and selling them to people like you. I don't get it. All right. How much is it a day? Thirty-five cents. And five times thirty-five is exactly uh, one dollar and sixty-five cents. One dollar two five times seven is. David, you can't add. No, but I can multiply. Well, if you can multiply correctly, it's a dollar and seventy-five cents. Oh, it is. It is. Well. That's beside the point. And what were you doing when you paid two dollars then? Me? Oh, uh, I was buying wooden nutmegs. Some women take household chores in their stride, working comfortably through the day. They regard the job of homemaking as their husbands regard their office and factory jobs. And they know it's wise to take time out every once in a while to relax. They keep the refrigerator well stocked with Coca-Cola... So they can reach for an ice-cold bottle of Coke and enjoy the pause that refreshes. How's your supply? Better put Coke on today's marketing list. I know something, Mr. King. What's that, Lewis? I just realized that's the Norton's car. Say, they paid me for the week already. I have to give the little lady a money back. I'm sure she'll be relieved to get it, Lewis. Say, uh, how come they're rushing to New York that way? Mrs. Norton, uh, Claudia, has to see the doctor, Lewis. Well, nothing serious, I hope. Oh, I hope not, too, Lewis, but we really won't know until tomorrow. Is that a fact? Well, keep me posted, Mr. King. I'll be seeing you. So long, Lewis. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.